So what do you think about that, Harry? Yeah, it's good. See, we don't have miserable Trev. Instead, we've got happy Harry. <laughs> <laughs> There hasn't been a negative review so far of the Hollybro Coppice One, and that's for very good reason. It is just brilliant and beautiful. This is part one where we're going to unbox and set it up. Part two will be the flight test. You'll find links to the cheapest deal in the video description. Please give the video a thumbs up and comment below with your thoughts during the video. And of course, subscribe because we've got a pile of products to review next. Enjoy the review, it's a good one. So if you were to ask me which racing quadcopter have I been looking forward to reviewing this year, it would be this, the Hollybro Coppice One. And it's come to us from Gearbest. And this is the nice thing actually about Gearbest. It has its own box, this quadcopter, but rather than just pad the box, they actually put the whole box in a bigger box. But at least you know you get absolute safe arrival of your product that you've ordered. Let's get it opened. And there it is. So as I say, we've got this nice presentation box and it's really nice that Gearbest protect the products when they send them out to you. So here it is, the Coppice One. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Could be Copis, but probably Coppice. On the back, we've got the specification of the quad, but we're just gonna dive straight into the box because I cannot wait to see this one. Now this has been getting rave reviews online, this kit, and for good reason. It's not just good because of the price, it's good because the specification really is pretty top. Look at this lovely presentation case that this arrives in. This is the first racing quadcopter I've ever unboxed that actually comes with its own box. Branded with Hollybro as well, so it's not just some random OEM case. That's really, really smart. Open up the case, and there it is. Whoa, look at that, it's gigantic. So it's protected inside the case by this strap, which you might think is the battery strap, but it's not, it's part of the actual case. So there is the quadcopter, and what an absolute beauty that is. Now I'm used to unboxing budget quads. I have bought some premium quads myself, of course, but they just don't feel as good as this one. So we'll move on to that in just a second. We'll just see what else is in the box, and we'll come straight back to it. So in this zip part of the case here, we've got our bundled accessories. So it looks like we've got in here spare battery straps, we've got a camera programming cable which you use to adjust the camera settings. We've got what looks to be heat shrink, uh, some zip ties, an Allen key, uh, and also some sticky pads in there. So various little bits and bobs of accessories. We've got a GoPro mount. Now it looks like it's for a session, although of course if you've got the Runcam 3, that may also fit in here as well because I think it's the same dimension. Really nice that it actually comes with that mount. You also get some spare props. Now there are already four props fitted to the quad itself, but you get four spare. And these of course are five inch three blade props. And then of course we get some documentation, just marketing material really, to show the spare parts on the quad so that you know what you need to order if you break bits. And also a bit of marketing material to show their other models. So forget the accessories, let's get back onto the quad. So there it is, and what a beautiful quadcopter it is too. It's worth noting that this one did come from Gearbest, where I checked before this review, it is currently cheapest from Gearbest right now. So click the link in the video description to take a look. There are two options when you order this, you can have it with an FR Sky receiver or without, and it's a difference of about $15. The main frame here is 5mm woven carbon fibre and it feels beautiful quality. The edges are all nicely rounded and contoured, there are no sharp edges here and it just feels really good quality. On the ends of the arms here we've got T-motors and they are brushless, they're part of their Air 40 range and they are 2450kV motors so nice fast spinning motors. It's incredible just how much power can be extracted from motors that are so tiny. Attached to those motors, we've got BL Heli speed controllers. They are 30 amp and they support D-Shot 1200 as well. Now they are mounted underneath the arms, which I'm not a massive fan of personally because of potential for damage if you crash. Although you have got the height of the battery, which is gonna protect those, although your battery may come off worse. The wires from the speed controllers to the motors do feel very, very soft rubber. Uh, that is potentially a weakness there as well. The motors are spinning five inch three blade props and of course, as I mentioned earlier, you get four spare props in the bag as well. 
Looking at the front, now this is lovely. We've got a Run Cam Swift Mini, not just some cheap off the shelf camera, but one of the most well respected cameras in the FPV world. It's a 600 TVL camera, it's got a 150 FOV via the 2.3 mil lens on the front of it, and of course, being a Run Cam Swift Mini, you get features like WDR, wide dynamic range, which means the brightness contrast between ground and sky is automatically taken care of. In other words, your picture should look beautiful all the time. It's also worth noting that the camera is fully tiltable as well. It comes with a preset tilt of what looks to be about 60 degrees, but it tilts all the way up to 90 in case you want to fly like a crazy person. Connected to that camera, we've got a VTX by ATL ATL. It's one of their HV range, and it's a 40 channel switchable VTX with a power output of between 25 up to 600 milliwatts. Now, I think if you turn it on at 600 milliwatts, you're probably gonna knock out your local TV station. That's significantly powerful. But a nice feature of the VTX as well is that it's got pit mode, which basically when you enable that, it knocks the milliwatt output down to 0.5, which means that you're not gonna take out anyone else who's already flying in the air. Inside the main stack here, we've got a lovely brand new F4 flight controller with loads of nice features, including, for example, programmable on-screen display. You can even set the VTX power and output via the on-screen display, so that's really cool. Attached to that FC on the back as well is a buzzer. Good. So we've got a voltage warning, and if we happen to lose the model, we're going to be able to hear it. On the side of the stack, we've also got the USB port for programming this via our computer, and that's what we'll be doing next. And then on the rear, we've got the main VTX antenna, which comes with it. That's a mushroom style, unusual shape antenna, actually. By the sides of that antenna, we've then got the antennas for our 2.4 gig control. Now, I don't personally like the way that they've routed these antennas out. It just feels a bit clumsy, and they're also potentially in the way of those spinning props. I would have preferred to have seen some diagonal antenna mounts on the rear here to just give maximum possible signal and also to keep the antennas well away from these spinning motors. Underneath that antenna, we've then got an XT60 power connector, which is great. And then we've also got some little LED clusters. So there are six in total. They're going to be pre-configured, but I would imagine you can also customize those via the flight controller configuration. Finally, looking underneath, we've got the speed controllers and the wires routed, as I mentioned earlier, but we've also got a battery protection plate. It's made of carbon fiber, and it's just about the right size for a 4S 1300 milliamp battery. That's attached to the battery strap, and so you're not going to lose that too easily. And just finally, there's a little lead coming out here. Now, I think it's coming from the camera, in which case it's probably for using the accessory that comes with it, which is the programming cable for that run cam, just so that you can alter other aspects of the picture. So a quick weigh-in now with the Copus One, and it weighs in at 304 grams, which is a little bit on the heavy side, but then again, we're packing a lot of technology into this quad. And also remember, power to weight ratio. This thing is gonna be powerful. So not so bad after all. So all in all, this is a really high caliber quad. It's beautifully made. I love this stretched shape as well. It's not your typical symmetrical square shape, so it's gonna be great for racing. It's just really, really nicely made, and there really isn't anything else I would say on the market right now that gives you components such as T-Motors, a run cam camera, a really good brand VTX, all in one, ready to fly. So before we can actually fly the Coppice One, we're gonna to have to bind it with our transmitter. I've chosen the model which incorporates an FR Sky receiver and I've got my Tyrannis X9D here. Now you're going to need a battery of course and you're going to need a screwdriver in order to get this binding process completed and we'll run through it now, starting with the transmitter setup. First step of course is to create a new model. So we're gonna press menu and then we're gonna move down to an empty slot and we're gonna use number 10 here. So press and hold enter. Select create model, and that will open up the creation wizard. Now we're creating a quad, so we're gonna move it to the quadcopter icon here, and then press enter again. Now we're gonna leave all the channel assignments as they are by default. So I'm just gonna page through, elevator, pitch, etc. roll, your, and accept all of that. Quite happy with all of that, so I'm gonna press and hold enter to finish, and that creates my new model. 
Next, I need to define some additional mixer outputs, and that's so that I can have my switches for beeper and also arming and disarming, and of course, flight mode. So press page until we get to the page called mixers. Now you'll see the four standard channel assignments that have been added automatically by the wizard. We're going to add three more, five, six, and seven. It's as simple as assigning the switches that you want. So channel five, I'm gonna have for arming and disarming. So I'm gonna press enter on that, move down to the source button, press enter again, and now flick my arm disarm switch. That automatically sets that to the switch that I need. Press exit, and that is then five defined. Do the same with six and seven. So I'm gonna use channel six for my mode switch up here. This is normally the one I use. Lovely. And then finally, we're gonna set the channel seven switch and I'm gonna use that for my beeper. So if I lose my model and I usually use this switch here. Now these switches are all gonna be assigned to your particular needs. This is just my personal preference. So we've now set up the mixer tab. When you finish setting up yours, it should look something like that. So now that we've got our model memory set up in the Tyrannus, we're now gonna bind it to the quadcopter. To do that, we first need to prepare the transmitter. And to do that, you need to go into the settings for that model, press page once, and then go down to the bottom. You can do that quickly by pressing the plus. And you'll see here we've got mode. Now make sure mode is set to D16 because the FR Sky receiver that comes with the Coppice One is a D16 receiver. You can leave everything else as it is, but get the cursor ready on the bind button. As soon as we're ready to bind, we're gonna press enter. Transmitter will then start emitting a beep. You can then press the enter button and the transmitter will start beeping like that. We're gonna now put the transmitter to one side and leave it doing that. Okay, so with the transmitter in the background beeping away, we're now gonna get the quadcopter ready to bind. You can see near the top plate of the Coppice One, there's a little micro button there. That's the actual FR Sky receiver. Now, of course, this only is relevant if you've got the version that includes the receiver, but basically what we need to do is connect the battery whilst holding down that button, and that will put the receiver into bind mode. So we'll do that now. So with the button held down, I'm gonna plug it in. Now it's worth adding as well, if you are new to drones, it's worth removing the props before you do this, but I'm going to leave them attached. So connect the battery like that. And that puts our receiver into binding mode and it should now bind with our Tyrannus. You can see the lights flashing away in here. So what we can now do is turn it all off, unplug the quadcopter first, turn off the transmitter, and then turn it all back on, starting with the transmitter first, and then plug in the quadcopter. And we'll know if we've been successful because the little receiver light will now be solid green. That means we've successfully bound to the transmitter. You can also verify the binding by checking the telemetry on the Tyrannus. So if we go to the very final page of the Tyrannus model setup, we can go down to discover new sensors, press enter, and we've got a load of data coming back. This is lovely. We've got loads of sensors there, battery level, the RSSI, SWR, um, loads of detail. So that's the model set up and bound. What we're gonna do now is get into the flight controller configuration and set this up ready for flight. So before we start with the activity in beta flight, a few safety tips. Remove the props from the Coppice One before you start this activity. That's really important because changes you make during the beta flight configuration could prompt your props to spin up to full. And this is a powerful quad that could do some serious damage. Remove all four props. You need to keep the main battery connected, however, so that you can get power to your receiver. Launch beta flight in the web browser and then connect your USB cable into the quadcopter. Your laptop will make a noise and then it may install it. So keep an eye on the bottom right hand corner of the screen to see the progress there. Mine's already been connected and is installed and so I can now click connect. So let's start with the basic setup. So first of all, we see the accelerator calibration which looks nice and flat. I'm actually gonna leave that as it is. Ports tab, we don't need to do anything there. Configuration is an interesting one. So it's running DSHOT 600, therefore these motors 
and the speed controllers do not need any calibration routine, although they do sometimes recommend turning it back to a legacy protocol, calibrating the speed controllers and then switching back to DShock 600, but I'm gonna leave it as it is. Now you'll see the quad does actually support DShock 1200, but we're gonna leave it on the factory setting at the moment of DShock 600. Looking through there, we've got the gyro update set to 8,000, wow. And PID loops at 2,000, that's really good. SBOS receiver is already set up. Got a setting here for craft name, so I'm gonna put in here Ash Coppice One. And then what else do we have here? Yep, nothing else that we need to change here. We're certainly not gonna be flying this 3D. Great to see that we've got current metering and VBAT all enabled. So I'm gonna quickly click save and reboot just to implement that configuration. And then we're gonna be reconnected like that. Okay, now onto the PID tuning tab. Now, this apparently is a great well-tuned quad straight from the factory, so I'm not changing anything here. The only thing I'm gonna change actually is to up the rates up to 0.8, and this is really personal preference, so it's up to you how you set these. And I'm gonna leave your as it is. Just scrolling through, what else do we have here? Um, just to check the rates, see how sensitive it might be. Yeah, that looks nice to me. Okay, I'm gonna click save there, and then we're gonna to move to the receiver tab. So on the receiver tab, just gonna check that all my channels match correctly. So when I put my pitch back and forward, my roll left and right, everything is responding as it should. My yaw and of course my throttle, that's all working perfectly. Now you can see, however, that we have an endpoint mismatch here. And I've written an article on how to fix that. I'm gonna leave it as it is for now, but have a look at the article. There's a link on the screen now, and that will tell you how to fix these so that they are tidy and neat. Next is the most important tab as far as I'm concerned, modes. Now, from the factory, we only have horizon mode configured. And of course, that means that rate mode is also there as well. But we're going to be configuring some additional options here. So first of all, arm um, at the moment is reversed. I prefer the switch to be the other way around. Now, I could do that, of course, by altering the settings on the receiver, but I'm just gonna slide the sliders up like that. And I'm gonna save that. There we go. So it's now gonna arm when the switch is on the other side. So if I test that now, yep, perfect. And the motor starts spinning. I'm now gonna configure angle mode as well. And I'm gonna configure that as the initial switch position on aux two. So I want horizon mode on the middle of that range there. And then I want rate mode, of course, in the middle here. But of course, configuring rate mode requires no setting there. Next is the beeper. Now I do want my beeper enabled. I've put that on aux three, and I'm gonna set that up to the top so that when I switch my beeper switch, when I save it, of course, <laughs> there we go. So we've got a beeper going. That works perfectly. Now you might be wondering where the air mode toggle is. Now that's not here anymore as of Betaflight 3.1, I'm reliably informed. Under configuration, you'll see there's now an option that says air mode permanently enabled. If you disable that, you can then configure it under the different modes, but you might as well leave it permanently enabled. I don't see any reason why not, unless you're not a fan of the prop spinning when you first arm the quad. So very finally, we're gonna skip the motors tab because we don't need to calibrate that. OSD, we're going to turn off a few elements here that we don't want. I'm gonna turn off the horizon sidebars, we don't need that. I love the way that we've got the VTX channel visible on here, things like that. Loads of options that you can enable and disable, and this OSD is really flexible, so configure that as you desire. And then of course you can configure the LEDs as well. Just to verify as well, the version of Betaflight that we're running here is 3.2, so it comes with a very, very new recent version, and that's a great sign. So now that we've configured it, all that's left to do is fly it. But that's gonna be in part two, which will be live in just a few days, and you are going to love it, so don't miss it. <laughs> Go and look at the Coppice one now via the link in the video description and also comment on the video with your thoughts. Finally, click subscribe now because you do not want to miss part two. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>